Good afternoon. Welcome to the first look seminar here live from Santa Anita. We got uh, three of the uh, three of the best right here. We got Chappy, Gino Bacola. It's great to have you. It's uh, it's it's you. It's you, Gino B. Oh, I'm back. I thought you guys hated me, but I'm back after a few weeks. Don't worry. <laughs> We're here to make some money today. We're gonna talk a little Friday and then a lot of Saturday. Six uh, a pick six mandatory payout on Saturday. Five graded stakes races in that sequence at Del Mar. This is as good of a card at you'll see as you'll see at Del Mar the entire meet. Yeah, it's good. It's good. fantastic. Before we get to that, I just want to say, uh, give my uh, thoughts on uh, on uh, uh, Spencer's farm, who uh, of course Mr. Uh, Hughes died, and but you know I've been on uh, a lot of his horses. Plus, I use his storage units a lot, so you know I really I like that uh, that whole uh, idea. But uh, Beholder, of course, that was his you know his big horse, and now it just coincidentally the Pacific Classics coming up. And that's when Beholder just annihilated uh, a field being the first female to win that race, Chappie. Yeah, c c condolences to his family, obviously. And, uh, you know, Mr. Hughes was a pioneer and a titan of the industry. And, you know, we, we look back at so many of the things he's done. But like you said, Beholder's the one who stands out. And I happened to watch the replay of that race yesterday. I believe they were showing it. And, you, you forget that she won by like 10 lengths or something. I mean, she didn't win. She demolished them. Yeah. That was unbelievable, huh, Gino? She was one of the best horses, um, you know, of the last, I think about 20 years or so. Just absolutely phenomenal. And um, what a great ambassador for the sport. He will be missed. He was someone who loved the races and just mm -hmm. poured so much money into it, too. I, uh, I had some interactions with him when working at TVG in my years. And it was always just someone who was uh, – uh, so, so happy to be at the racetrack. Yep. No doubt. It's, it's funny when I hear the story that he asked a few trainers uh, to to join him in a partnership with that uh, uh, public storage. And they said, nah, that's never going to work. <laughs> so trainers, not the sharpest guys in the world, as we've uh, known over the years. Yeah, but, we, uh, we knew that uh, already. That <laughs> yeah, we knew that already. Yeah. <laughs> and then again, I wasn't sharp enough to join uh, Dylan Donnelly yesterday, Chappy. He hit the pick six on like a ten dollar ticket. How is that possible? Fourteen dollar ticket, pick six, thirty five thousand. Uh, I think he was too deep in in the race where the the fifty to one beat the fifteen to one, and and those were the two horses he had in that leg. So very sharp capper, well done. And he was singled in the last race to the uh, Papa Padroma horse who just wow. held on. So. Very well yeah, done to him. A couple people alive for the two million yesterday. Yeah, too. right. You I'm imagine sure being alive for $2 million just going into the race, sitting on it. Oh. I think the most I've been alive for closing in a situation was, you mm. know, half like half a million before. I've been alive mm. in that situation and lost wow. uh, with a couple different horses. And What's that get, feeling like? You start, you know, you can't help it. You don't even, you really don't want to look at the payouts, but you can't help it. You do, yeah. you know, because then right. you know you're the only person in the pool at that situation. And so you think it's your day. You know, you're like, I'm the only one alive. This I'm supposed to hit it today. This is the one no. that I've been waiting for my whole life. This is why I do right. this, you know, and then you don't. And then, oh, man, let's create it afterwards. <laughs> right. Then you can't sleep for two weeks because you can't yeah. think about what if, what if. Yeah. yeah. I remember being alive to a lot of big tickets. And usually when I'm alive to a big ticket. I like to walk as far as I can by myself yeah, and just so I can scream my head off and nobody around me will, you know, that I even know. I just try to walk away and, and, and then just start screaming or uh, usually in a negative fashion. Like, you know, I'm at home, I close all the doors and the windows just because the neighbors, I just, <laughs> I don't know. You, know, you never know. You know? <laughs> I don't, I remain, I remain very calm. I don't say a word. I just yeah. let it, I just let it go off right off my back. Yeah. Actually, that's just not randomly it. walking by uh, when the yeah. Dodgers were, were about to win the World Series, came came by the next day and said, oh, I walked by, I wanted to say hello, but I, I heard you screaming. There was a, a baseball game <laughs> on or something. Probably best to stay away at that point. Yeah. 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 Uh, the F-bombs will fly. That's for sure between the three of us. We know that. <laughs> All right. As you mentioned, uh, Gino, we have some spectacular racing tomorrow. Uh, and uh, if you bet uh, right here with, uh, what is it, first bet? dot com uh, we're gonna have a uh, money back special in a every single race tomorrow so definitely uh, helps to uh to bet with uh first bet or express bet i love that money back special uh, you know you bet up to ten dollars 
Uh, you can bet more, but you know, the, if, if it comes in second or third, you get ten dollars back. If he wins, of course you win. So uh, that's cool. If Sadia wins, they're going to give somebody a hundred dollars. There's a lot of good promotions, the Queen's Plate, and so many other things. So definitely uh, sign up if you haven't signed up. They got some great promotions for first time uh, sign uppers, and um, you, if you bet through first bet, uh, you're going to have a great time. Uh, before we get to tomorrow, just a couple of uh, of uh, races here. I, I just want to give a best bet for today before we get to tomorrow. Then I'll ask you, Gino, as well. But I really love a horse today in race number eight. He's uh, Six to one, which is well, I was surprised, but maybe just because of the connections. Number five, Wedding Chapel. Wedding Chapel trained by Sal Gonzalez, Tricar Stables, uh, and uh, you know Tricar Stables doesn't get bet a lot. He 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 started fifty to one, almost won like that fifty to one shot yesterday. Came in second and ran a great race. He was extremely wide. Uh, now they add some blinkers. Really, of the ones that have run, I really don't think that the, the, they're any good. So, really, you got a first time starter that you got to beat. Big switch with Joe Bravo and Sadler. I'm sure he's going to be a great first time starter. But I always would rather have a horse that has some experience, uh, especially when you get to two year olds. That one race under their belt really, really helps. And I think Wedding Chapel, six to one in the program, has every right to win. It's going to be my best bet of the day. Uh, Gino, you have a best bet today? Going to the chapel. Georgie's going to get married. We're going yeah, to baby. race number four. Uh, I'm going to the one later days in here. These are 25 claimers. They're going six furlongs on the main. You know, there, there's nobody in here that really scares the heck out of you. And I there's really not that much speed for this kind of a sprint race. There's a lot of kind of pressers. There's some horses who have shown speed going a little bit longer. I think later days with the rail draw, is just going to send. It's got to go from the inside. It's going to be third start off of the, the long layoff. So I think set for the absolute best. Going to be dropping in class from 40 claiming to the 25. Take a look at some of the races that uh, he's been coming. she's been coming out of. Two starts back, she's behind a horse named Samurai Charm, who's actually won three in a row. Samurai Charm just won at Del Mar in an allowance, a starter 50, by nine-plus lengths last wow. week. Later days is – they're just kind of trying to figure out where she fits. In her last start – she actually broke really well. It was a good start, but a bunch of horses lined up for the lead. So she was in, in kind of in between. She was like third pressing in chase mode. I think with the inside draw, sometimes it's actually a blessing in disguise because it forces you. I don't think they're going to try to get cute and take back. Just break, send hard, try to open up on this field that doesn't seem to have a ton of speed in here. Give me the one later days. Anything in the like six, eight to one range worthy of a win wager. So you guys are you guys are bookending the pick six or the pick five today, the late yeah, pick five. There you, yeah. go. you can go. Single, all, 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 single. There you go. Yeah. It up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll, get a, you'll get a PJ with this one. You'll get the pool job right here for sure, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, I, got nothing, I got nothing for you, George. I, we, I we, had, we had Tyler Bays on the show, uh, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago, and he was uh, just not doing well, not winning. He told me, don't even ask me about my meat because I'm not doing well. <laughs> but he's really starting to ride a, a lot better. He won a, a, a game race yesterday that he really ha had to fight. And so Tyler Bays is doing much better. Uh, and later days with Tyler Bays, I think Tyler Bays is getting a lot more confidence. Certainly has got a big shot. 12 to 1. Boy, that, you can't go wrong there. You can't go wrong betting tomorrow. Once again, uh, great promotions. Go to expressbet.com. And the uh, the late pick six, which somebody almost hit it, boy, uh, Delmar would have been slitting their wrist if somebody uh, had a single, boy, because they got such a big. From you know, I mean, they're expecting a huge, huge I mean, on Saturday, and I think that uh, I think we dodged the bullet yesterday. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think that's gonna happen today. But so tomorrow, uh, big carry, you know, carryover, mandatory payout, and it's really uh, behooves you to get involved in the pick six. And we're going to try to help you along the way. It starts right away with a grade three, the Tory Pines. They're going a mile. Uh, how'd you see the race, uh, Gino? This um, this race looks on paper to have a good amount of speed. And I think because you have a lot of these sort of lightly raced horses, some of them that haven't shown a lot of uh, success going longer, I expect there to be a good amount of speed. I mean, just at first glance, Lady Mystify has shown a, a lot of pace since stretching out in her last two. You look at Private Mission, who's only been sprinting. You expect her to be right there close to the lead. I'm so Anna was right up on the pace last time out. Day plan is going to be very close stretching out. So the way I'm projecting this race, I'm sort of looking for someone who I, who I think can sit off. Um, Forrest Caraway was really impressive in, in her return to the races and in her first start at three. 
Now, I, I'm a little concerned that she comes back pretty quickly. The only reason why it doesn't bother me that much, she did come back on August the 1st and win. Generally, when a horse comes back off a long layoff, I like them to have like a month to kind of in between races because sometimes it takes a lot out of them. But in this particular race, she was actually just sitting right behind. It's set up perfectly for her. She got a great run on the inside, opening like right up the rail. And it wasn't as if she was battling throughout and really had to work really, really hard. So I'm not... I don't know how much that race took out of her. It doesn't it doesn't concern me as much with the quick wheel back. I mean, on paper, she's going to stretch out too. So she'll probably be a little bit closer. But I, I project her to sit, you know, maybe third or fourth in here behind some of those other speeds. She was a step slow. She took back. And she just tracked really, really nicely. Look at her form last year at two. She won her debut. She came back and she was uh, second in a grade one behind Princess Noor, who came back to win another grade one. And then in her last start at two, she stumbled, and that was the race that sent her to the bench for a while. So she had some sort of a physical issue. Legitimate excuse for that one. Uh, Forrest Caraway for me, maybe even a horse that I would think about singling right off the bat. Um, I'm not really high on private mission. Um, I, I don't know if this race is going to shape up all that well for her. The two from the inside, I would prefer more than her. Uh, Lady Mystify and Lisette, those would probably also be horses I use in the pick six trying to start. <laughs> Chappie, how'd you see the sixth? I think it's a tough race just because there's so many unknowns going here. I mean, you think yeah. about it, um, you know, four of the horses have, have yet to try two turns yet. Um, you know, Jeannie B, who's not much of a factor, but still on the stretch out, Forrest Caraway's never gone two turns. Day Plan and Private Mission have all only gone six panels as well. So, you know, on paper, I'm just trying to figure out the pace scenario. Like Gino says, that Forrest Caraway looks like a horse who'll probably be able to sit even a horse like I'm so Anna, if you go back some races and that horse is kind of battle tested in a bunch of stakes races and have set off the past, sat off the pace in the past. And it's two for two in the money at Del Mar. We know how important that is at Del Mar. But um, to me, it's going to be a little bit of a spread race just because of the unknown factor with horses not going two turns. So I don't have a strong opinion uh, in here as I do in some other races. Although the whole card tomorrow is very difficult. You got to take some stands, but there's, it's tough spots to take your singles but to kind of piggyback your point a little chappy. What is nice about the two Lisette is she actually does have a good race sitting off and it, you know, she sat close. She won't be close to the lead in this race. Agreed. Like, she's not as fast as some of the others. And she just kind of broke well. And they just sat in a really good spot with her. I expect her to be sitting more fourth or fifth. And when she won, it was in a race that was kind of similar in that, you had a lot of horses that didn't look like they may want to go long, and she looked like she did like, what, like fit that bill. So she's probably going to be on a lot of my tickets just for the, the I don't really have a uh, concern with distance yeah. with her. And, and I think Rispoli fits her well sitting yeah. off the pace, like you yeah. said, the way it's going to set up. I agree with you there. Georgie? I um, I you know the, the first thing that came to my mind was the first thing that Gino said. Forrest Caraway looked so impressive winning that race last time. It was off a layoff, and uh, Peter Miller obviously uh, killing it at, uh, at at this uh, meet. And you look at the, uh, the the two year olds that she used to face: Princess Nor, Illumination, uh, Calypso. Those are some those are some quality two year olds that she beat. Uh, she ran, you know, the Delmar debutant ran really good. So likes Delmar, obviously. Uh, she ran a six on the sheets. It's the best number. Uh, coming into this. So I think Princess Caraway is a definite use. I've noticed that on big days like this, on really big days and the stakes races in particular, it seems like Pratt gets up for these races. So, uh, you know, it's going to be tough for me to leave Pratt out of any of these big races. And especially with a Bob Baffert, who to me is going to be the speed of the speed comes in with a, you know, a, a, a brilliant work. In fact, you know, all the works have been really, really solid. So I think, you know, even though, there's some question marks about the distance. You got to use private mission. And uh, I think of the ones that have run, uh, you know, a mile. I think I'm so Anna has been running really well. Uh, last race impressed the uh, closing remarks. I thought closing remarks was going to win that race for sure. And, and I'm so Anna was so game that day. So I'm going to try to get by with three of them, four, six, seven, the one Pratt, you know, three times rode uh, lady miss mystify and chose to go to private mission He's not the leading rider by dropping, you know, winners. So I'm not going to use Lady Mystify, although I know that, you know, she can win. And Lissette is just personal. 
when I was when I was like 25 years old, I I try I, I convinced my friend Lisette to go into like a business deal with me, and we lost a ton of money, and she she hates me, so I can't I can't bet Lisette just because of the name, man. It's like oh, no, Lisette. Oh, great, Gary is Gary, you know, so I can't. Anyway, I'm gonna try to get by with just four six seven. Let's go to race number seven, the Del Mar Mile, and uh, it's a Grade Two event with uh, you know not a uh, not a huge field, only six of them, but you got some heavy hitters in here, Gino. Yeah, this is a good race. I uh, I'm a little frustrated with Smooth Like Straight um, from from <laughs> from the Eddie Reed. Um, I think what I've what we've noticed with him too, in particular, is when you have a speed horse like that, the best weapon you have is your speed. And when, when he tries to, or, or when they've tried to really slow things down, what it does is it, it keeps some of the other slower horses in the race. And you don't really use that weapon that you have. Look at the last three times that Smooth Like Straight has gone slower than 48 to the half mile. He's lost. I don't think it's coincidence. And I don't really know, like, I know mile and an eighth might be a little farther than he wants, but I, he can get a mile and an eighth at the right kind of trip. I think it's better when he tries to go instead of when he tries to sit just off of a horse. And I don't know if he's going to get the kind of lone speed trip because Neptune Storm is in this race for a reason. Uh, Neptune Storm is good, but he's also going to really help the chances of Mo Forza. No in this question. Race. So I, I have a hard time when I look at Smooth Like Straight, I have a tough time kind of getting to him in this race because I'm trying to figure out, like I prefer – hit the road, and I think I prefer Mo Forza of the shorter-priced horses. Um, look at hit the road in, in his races that he's won fresh. His wins off of two months, off of five months, and off of seven months. So he just seems like he's really going to fire a good shot again. Um, he's run well at Del Mar. He might have just ran into a little bit too much at Keeneland last time out. The ship, he didn't get the greatest trip. I think I lean hit the road, and I prefer him. I feel like Neptune Storm, smooth like straight. Maybe they soften each other up a little bit and hit the road. Could get the jump on a horse uh, like Mo Forza. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably lean to – this is a quality <laughs> group, though. Real quality. Dabby? Well, to me, it goes through Mo Forza. Um, you know, fires well yeah. fresh. Just blitz that field two back at Del Mar. How many times do you win by four? Peter Miller owns Del Mar. Like Gino said, I think Smooth Like Straight's uh, best just going. And I, and I believe Neptune Storm is in there for that reason as well. And it sets up well for Morforza. Do you take a horse off of a layoff, that long of a layoff and single? I don't know. If I don't, I'm actually going to go four deep because I think Smooth Like Straight, it all depends. You know, Obviously, you can't leave that horse out. Hit the roads. According to all reports, is coming into this uh, race as good as can be. And like Gino says, fires well fresh. And I don't think you can count out, count again, who no. likes Del Mar, likes the mile. Last time was the only horse closing into a crawling pace. And that horse has got a big turn of foot. And at 12 to 1, I think uh, could – blow up the tote board uh and surprise that horses i think this horse is going to run well tomorrow so i'm 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 four deep in a six horse field and the other two could win who knows i think next shares might be a little over the top but even even neptune store depending on what smooth like straight does has a shot yeah but he got a, if he snuck away and they tried to sit you know he could he could sneak he's good mm -hmm. enough to win but he does look like his purpose in this race is twofold right like, right I think uh, I think as the card moves forward, it gets even tougher. So you know, it's like you you mentioned, you got to take a stand somewhere, and I'm taking a stand, and I'm going to single Mo Forza. I think Mo Forza is the goodest singles you're going to find in the sequence. Uh, like you guys said, Peter Miller, I think is certainly uh, thinking I'm not going to let Smooth Life Straight get an easy lead. So Neptune Storm is just not going to let that happen. It's uh, that's I, I, I just can't see it. Pratt obviously, Ray, you know, has ridden both uh, of the horses, and again, I mean, he's not leaving a loser. That's not why he's the leading jockey, and so he goes <coughs> to Mo Forza. I, I think it's a, it, it it sets up perfectly for Mo Forza. Uh, I'm going to single him. You got Pratt. You got Miller. 
off the layoff. Look, last time he was off the layoff, he won the Del Mar Mile by four lengths. So he, he can fire fresh. His thoroughgraph numbers are, you know, above the rest, easily above the rest. So I'm going to go live and die with Mo Forza. And uh, I can think of worse ones to go with, but uh, that's going to be my single. Can I tell you one quick story? We'll go 30 seconds our, you know, of, our, of our gambling stories. Back on August 31st, I had singled Mo Forza, who was actually against winners as a maiden, at 7-1 to one and loses by a nose. And I'm like, I'm done, I'm done. And then Mo Forza wins six of his next seven races. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's a gambler's story, a gambler's That's life. Great. True story. Oh, gosh. All right, Chappie, here's a really tough race. It's not a stakes race along the sequence. A tricky distance, seven furlongs, uh, pretty wide open. How did you see race number eight? Okay, I, you know, you guys are going to think I'm absolutely nuts, but I, I, we knew I, that. I we, we thought that before you yeah, started okay. talking here in this well, race. Nothing, to do, has nothing to do with the race. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good point. Um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've gone through this race with a fine tooth comb, and I've kind of narrowed it down to a couple of them, but I actually <laughs> might single Dream Shake in here. Um, you know, three year old against older. But I think this is exactly what Dream Shake wants to do. If you go back, you know, once again, you go back and watch that replay of the, the and I know it's the first race of the career, and that was six races ago. But, you know, Peter rarely wins first time out. The horse made a devastating move. Then they go straight into four races in a row, runs a grade one or a grade two. Two of them are two turns. This horse, I think, clearly is a one-turn horse. Um then at the seven furlong race, you know, they catch a good track. They go to the grade one Woody Stevens. That's at Belmont. I think that's just maybe a toss. Last time out, you really can't blame him for trying the ocean side. I mean, a twirling candy on the turf. Why not? Draw a line through that. Blinkers off. Pratt comes back on. I think this horse gets a perfect setup. I think seven furlongs is a perfect distance. Um, I do think positivity for O'Neill is very interesting. Um, you ran against open claimers, but is uh, three for three in the money and hit the board twice, including a win going seven furlongs, which is that tricky distance. That's the other horse that interests me, but I might take a stand here and single dream shake at seven to two. I uh, I am using this as a total spread race for me. Uh, dream shake is a little er is a little too erratic for me to have confidence in. Uh, every now and then throws a race. You go, wow, this could be the, the second coming and then throws in a clunker. I know it was against graded stakes races, but uh, I, I, think, I, I think most of those were, were you know, you got to remember the two of them are two turns. The other one was on the turf. The Churchill Downs mile that lost by head. That's a one turn mile. So I think this is just right. a one. turn horse. I get what you mean. And I, I'm projecting here, yeah. but I, well, right, you know, right. Yeah. No, I mean, they, they, he could win and he, and probably be my top pick, but, I still don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not in love with, uh, with him. And there's some other ones that can run, you know, really fast as well. Rosario's in town established uh, that race two back. That was a, you know, that against how be it, how be it is a, a hot commodity just winning left and right. Two and that was a good row that he's won with a 99 buyer in back to back yeah. wins. And uh scary fast mile, you know, Mark Glatt is great. Uh, the, the, the two wins, Earns uh, the, the best, you know, uh, some of the best thoroughgraph numbers in the race that were stellar. Last race, you know, he, he didn't run at all in the Bertrando. So a lot of people are going to get off of him, but he could he could win. Uh, Doug O'Neill just claimed positively for 50000 Uh To me, it's a spread race. I'm going to try to use, like I wrote down, this, I'm just the stupid, this guy of all time. I wrote down, I like him all but one horse. What am I, stupid? Just add the add the extra horse. Who Which, cares? Who cares? Who, cares? Who was the it. one that you didn't like? It is hot and dusty. It is hot and dusty. Okay. The okay. 10. But, you know, come on, man. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use them all uh, if I can in my pick six. Uh, Gito? I'm uh, I'm all to the inside here. Um, with Dream Shake, I have really mixed feelings about him because I think that this is the perfect spot for him. This distance, this trip against this group. I'm just a little bit worried that that Pat Day mile might have took a little something out of him. He ran his eyeballs out in that race. He was pressing a pace that was 43 and change all the way around. Right Jackie's, Jackie's warrior. warrior. Yeah. Yes, that's Jackie's fast. warrior is 
really, really good. Really I'm fast. Just, I'm just a little worried that that might have taken a little some of the starch out of him. If he's right, this is a great spot for him, and he'll run really well. There's not that much speed in here, is there? No. So I think the one you kind of have to use yeah. because of that reason. Like, I will, who's, I who, who's as quick as the one sprint-wise? The, the six, scary six fast maybe. mile, right? That would be the other speed. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 probably, and and maybe you know he, and maybe he just he's coming out of the mile race, so maybe his speed's dulled a little bit. But yeah, he's he's probably there, and maybe there's one or two others. But I think from the rail with the speed that risk and reward showed, um, he'll he'll be on my tickets for sure. Um, you mentioned one of the other ones, George established. So look at the the two races that he comes out of recently. He was behind how be it whose two two races are 99 and 99 buyer wins. <laughs> and then Ginobili, who won with 104 buyer. He just hooked a couple absolute freaks in his last two starts. He didn't run all that poorly. Those were both starts for Baltus. He's actually improved in his starts for Baltus. And he, now he turns back a little bit in here. I think he's going to be in a great spot. The one really intriguing horse to me, that is the one that could really spice things up for you. And a, a must use, a horse I'm probably going to play to win is the four Adair. Now it's funny because Adair, if they go, if they don't go very fast, Adair probably doesn't have a chance to win. So I need a little bit of speed to set up for Adair. He's drawn the inside over and over and over and over. Seven furlongs on the dirt could just be a perfect trip for him. He's got a late running style. He won and he broke his maiden at Del Mar going six and a half. His races at a mile are are good. And then in mile 16th is just a little bit too far. Even his race going six and a half on the turf three starts back was solid. His race last time out going six and a half was fine. He just didn't quite get the race shape he needed there. Um, and the, the, the race has come back live. We've already seen a horse come back and win next out. This horse is a big price and could really spice things up. I think a very nice horse to use in your pick six, start of your late pick four. Um, if it's a spread race, <laughs> The point of spreading is to use the really big prices, you know? So make sure that if you're spreading, you are going to throw in some <laughs> big logs. You don't want to necessarily go A, B, C, D, E, and you got a bunch of five to one shots because that's not really the whole point of, of spreading out. So use a couple bombs in this race would be one of my, uh, one of my requests at least. Well, one of the way I, one of the way I do the big days is uh, normally I'll do two different tickets with two yep. completely different singles. Yeah. And I like, Believe me, I'll probably maybe have the all button in this race in one ticket, and, and then, then single dream shake on dream the other. Dream shake on the other, because yeah. I like to tr I like to single a horse who's not a logical single to everybody else as well. Wide open race, right? And you know, if you if you catch it on taking your stand, you maybe have a leg up on everybody else. Sometimes it doesn't work, but, but you know, my other good. single might be six eight to one also. This so race is not that she's going to be. For most, if you single Dream Shake, even if Dream Shake is the favorite in the in the win pools, Dream Shake will not be even close to that price in these pools because other people are gonna like spread around and it's gonna mess up. You know, it's gonna mess everything yeah. up. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, looking at the sequence and obviously, I think Dream Shake will probably be the favorite. Yeah, there's a chance that Pratt might win all six of these races. Do you know? I mean, he's that good and he's on that good of stock. Uh, the man is amazing. I, I just love to see him. He just always puts him in the right spot. And uh, man, you know, the more you, I looked at all these uh, fields, I was like, He's live. this could be Pratt six in a row. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, you can't leave him out. He's on the almost the he's best horse good. every race. And, and he can pull good. it off. He can yeah. pull it off. How can people pull off watching Gino Bacola? You're on 87 different uh, shows. Tell us about some of the shows you're in and how we can watch you. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, it's me, Gino B. You can see right there. That's probably the best place to get all the information for everything that I'm doing. That's what G said is the name of my podcast. It comes out a couple times a week. And if you're a horse racing fan, every episode has multiple days of racing covered from multiple tracks. So right now, every episode will be like, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saratoga, Del Mar. And then it'll be Saturday, Sunday, Saratoga, Del Mar. So you'll always have a lot of different races. There will be a bunch of sports. We just did a full fantasy football preview. Everything going on in wrestling. SummerSlam coming up this weekend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> WWE Slam. all weekend long. <laughs> CM Punk, the Chicago man. He's going to be returning to wrestling tonight. Mm -hmm. So I've been having fun all week long. Uh, the Mike Abadir show is another one I'm on. 
I always post videos with my daily baseball wagers. I've been actually doing really well uh, firing at baseball over the last couple months. So fingers crossed there. And then NFL, just a couple weeks out, we did a full fantasy football preview. We did previews of every single team in the NFL, their totals, their over-unders. We got about six or seven hours of NFL content out there to preview the season for you. Gino started uh, 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 as a uh, broadcaster of uh, horse racing when he was like six years old. Yeah. He was on a show, and he's been on every show. He's worked with everybody. Like, yeah. you, you can just name say, uh, Matt Carruthers, I work with him. Uh, Chavi, I work with him. Bob uh, Barker, yeah, I work Bob with Barker. him. Come on he's down. <laughs> he's, uh, he's amazing, and he's so talented, and uh, we're funny. really honored to have you on the show because, uh, you know, you just do a stellar job, and thank, thanks for being here. Thank you. I, I love it. You guys are my buddies. So it's like we're hanging out with some friends and, uh, and talking races. Yeah. And, 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 and Chappie, he gets paid for all those shows except ours. We're yeah. the only people. Yeah. You know, and we, we take really up most of his time and we don't pay him a nickel. <laughs> anyway, Gino, let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, the Delmar Oaks. And I'm going to tell you what, uh, another, another tough race. I'm using two in here. I'm trying to Ooh. get by with just two oh. global, uh, going global. And Madone, who comes out of the, uh, they, they both come out of the San Clemente. Uh, man, I thought Going Global was going to win. I thought it was a lock. And and so Madone just really impressed me, uh, you know, closing in on a relatively slow pace. And they both kind of flew late. And Madone outkicked Going Global. I was in yeah. shock. No so excuses. I, like, no excuses for Going Global. No Got excuses at all. Trip. Got the great opening, got the jump, everything. Same ground, right? yeah. Down, down on the inside, yeah. A beautiful ride by Pratt, yeah. like uh, like awesome ride. Yeah. So I mean, I just can't, you know, I can't single going global anymore because Madone looked that good. I'm tempted to use closing remarks, but but you look at closing remarks and just you know he oh she always comes late but never quite gets there. And uh, of course, if if I'm so Anna wins earlier in the card. That's gonna help, I think. You know, her view of me and my and my. I just don't think she's 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 not gonna outkick Globe going global and Madone. So uh, I'm using those two and and, and hope to get by. Happy. So okay, so I think I'm down to four horses, but I'm leaning to even maybe using five, and I'll I'll tell you why. Obviously, going global. Obviously, use people. Some people are gonna single. Madone could be every bit as good as going yeah. global. I mean. Madone's three for three at Del Mar, and it's five wins and seven lifetime starts on the turf. You throw out the two clunkers, and this horse just never loses. So um, she might be every bit as good as going global, and people still are going to bet going global down yeah. at, at seven to five or something. I have to use closing remarks. Um, you know, if you go back to that race in April, she lost by a neck to going global. They crawled on the front end. She could be up close. Um, last time out, I, they, they they could have gone the next day in the San Clemente. Right. Maybe they were just trying the dirt. She did draw the 10 hole or no, the 12 hole, I believe. Um, so maybe it was just because nobody can win from way out there. They took a shot. I like that Rispoli is back on. I think that horse is interesting. The only other horse that I'm even considering and probably isn't good enough is Javanica because I there, absolutely there love that one. There's no speed in this race at it's, all. It's a lot. It's more than that. But can you can you lob me the softball? Can I can I swing at it for you? Here we go. So let's go through Javanica uh, from the very beginning. This was a horse who sprinting actually against the boys at Arlington and ran pretty well. Stretches out in career start number two, and she wins. Uh, she comes back at Woodbine in a stakes race. She runs in it. That race has come back really good. The winner of that, super sensational. She's won graded stakes race. She won a grade three over on the East Coast, and she was second in the grade one test recently. Then in the Jimmy Durante. What's wrong with the runner-up effort there? The second in the Blue Norther. Those are good races. She runs in the El Camino Real against the boys. Look who she's behind. Ron Bauer who goes over and wins the Preakness. She's right behind Rombauer. Then yeah. in her next start, she tries the dirt in the San Anita Oaks. She doesn't like the dirt. That's fine. But she runs into Soothsay, who's an absolute monster filly. Monster. Uh, then she comes back in the Senorita on May the 1st. That's the race that's really intriguing. She's able to get over to the two-path from the outside. 
and she's towards the rear. She's like six, seven. She's about six lengths off. And she gets caught in tight in between horses early. Then she moves wide into contention. She has to check late. She has to take up. She wasn't going to win that race. She was going to be a lot, lot closer. And then her form looks a whole lot different. I think in the last start, Pratt was on her. He thought he was on the best horse in the race. She broke well from the inside, and he just put her on the lead, which we see Pratt do quite often. She's not a need-the-lead type. So if somebody else goes to the front, she can sit fine. But shes I think she might do the same thing again. I think she might just break well. Nobody else goes. She inherits the lead from the front end. She's battled with some good ones. And I i think she's got some sneaky ability in here. I had it narrowed down to four um, with the logicals going global, Madoni. I do think Fluffy Socks does make some sense in here too uh, for Chad Brown. Joel jumps aboard. Fluffy Socks last two races. She's behind Cone Lima. Cone Lima comes back to run second in the Belmont Oaks, a grade one, and then win the grade three Saratoga Oaks. Also uh, last time out, a really nice second behind technical analysis, who's a, a solid horse. I'm a little worried, though, if she might not get the right race shape because there's not that much speed in here. So if she's a stone-cold closer, she may be up against it. I, I absolutely love uh, Javanika in here. And I probably said her name four different ways in the four different times I've said it. I think I went Javanika, Javanika, Havanika, like, you know, different things. But, yeah, give me the two here. Uh, two, seven, three, four, how I had them racked. By the way, uh, our man Benny South Street, who we love from Chip No Pros, he's watching and he texted me and said, "You guys are crazy, no shot, Javanika." So crazy like a straw, crazy <laughs> like a straw. We got to get Benny on soon. Yeah, we got to yes, get Benny, Benny. back. He, he's 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 mocking us though. I know via text. He Great. knows as a trip note, man. We get crazy with the trips. And that's the that's when you feel confident. The bigger the price they are, and the crazier they are. That's certainly, right. uh, certainly, some uh, a site that you should uh, get involved with. Tripnotepros.com. They got some just great information. Uh, many times, I don't have time to watch all these races. Uh, a lot of times, the comments, you know, they only have like a couple of words, and uh, and, and they can't elaborate. But Tripnotepros.com has uh, some great analysis as far as trips are concerned and uh, certainly would behoove you to, to get that. Fluffy That's Socks. why I do podcasts and I don't write. Could you imagine how long it would be if I had to write stuff down? Oh, oh my God. Nobody <laughs> would read. And it's just no, no way. No way. It'd be like a novel. Gino's novel. No shot. No yeah, I'm scared, I'm scared of Fluffy Socks as well. I think Fluffy yeah, Socks. No, that was the other one. But yeah, Chad Brown. Chad Brown, about. you know, and, and Rosario, they just yeah. all they all they do is win, I'm, win, win, I'm wearing, win, win. I'm wearing fluffy socks right now, so that's, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. all right. Uh, the tenth race uh, is a little race uh, called uh, the Pacific uh, Classic, <laughs> and uh, certainly a race uh, that is going uh, to draw all the attention. One million dollars. You just don't see a million dollar race that much anymore. No. Go ahead, Chappie, do it. One million dollars. <laughs> that was and, terrible. And my, uh, oh my, uh, you know, look at the line. Three to one, seven to two, four to one, five to one, five to one. A highly competitive race, Gino. Uh, nobody's, there's no single in this race. How did you see yeah. the 10th? Yeah, this is what's great. You can make cases for and against so many. And I think the mile and a quarter is what really makes this race a little different, like a different than if this was a mile and a 16th mile and an eighth race. Because there's a lot of horses that just don't want to go that far and maybe a couple others who could benefit from going that far. I do think the, the horse to beat, even though he may not love a mile and a quarter, is Express Train. I do think he's about as honest as they come. You sort of know what you're going to get from him. He shouldn't be too far out of it. He's going to give you a, you know, he's going to give you his all. I, I, I'm not quite sure though, if you're going to get that late punch from him at the mile and a quarter. When I start having some concerns about everyone, I feel like the horse that I have the least amount of worries with is Dr. Post in here. Um, he, I don't feel like the mile and a quarter is going to hurt him. So last year, he was really good. I think people kind of forget about him. He was actually second in the Belmont behind Tis the Law, that Belmont that was shortened up. He was then third in the Haskell. He was favored in the Jim Dandy. That was at the end of his year. And 
he just didn't run all that well. And Mystic Guy just come back and run very well. So that race looks a lot better now. Then he, he returns off of a long layoff in uh, in May. He wins a grade three, first off the bench. He does it pretty nicely. Then he comes back in a really tough spot in the Met. And he runs fit that day. But you know who was fourth? Nick's go was fourth in that race. Nick's go came out to out of that race to win the grade three Cornhusker and then the grade one Whitney. You know who was sixth in that race? Lexitonian, who came out of that race to win the grade one Vanderbilt. That was a loaded, loaded uh, group. Then Dr. Post comes back in the Monmouth Cup. He got squeezed back out of a spot early. He settled. He's fifth. He's sixth. He's about four lengths off. He makes a wide move. Just kind of keeps him in the clear. They treated him like they thought he was the best horse that day. Joel jumps aboard. One of the best finishers. I think a lot of the other SoCal horses, I, I wouldn't be shocked. They wouldn't surprise me, but they kind of feel similar. I, I think a new face might be a horse to take in this spot. Tabby, I have no idea. I, so, I mean, <laughs> I, I watched like three hours of race replays last night, and and I got to this race, and I just kind of went, well, I'll get back to this one because you know the the one good thing about this Pacific Classic is it's not your typical superstar race, that's no. for sure. No. But when it comes to to a betting race, it's a very good betting race. I got to go back and look at. Uh, some more replays here. I, I don't know the pace scenario in here. I don't know who wants to go a mile and a quarter. I watched that last race that, that some of those came out of. And, and, you know, Express Train battled on the lead and fought bravely and has won three of four races at Del Mar. Obviously likes the Del Mar uh, surface. Royal Ship looked loaded at the top of the lane, kind of flattened out um, and was the beaten favorite. Tripoli is a little ex interesting and ran all turf, all turf, all turf and ran two ba bang up races and actually was coming last time, you know, wide against those other horses and, and ran very well and only his second uh, time ever on the dirt. But I, I you know, that's I, uh, what you're saying is I that's the problem I had with this race is that I got like Tripoli, Tis a Magician, Royal Ship, Express Train and even Independence Hall in like this right next to each other range. They all feel like really similar. And then there's Dr. Post, who's just kind of the new face, who I, I feel like maybe he's just a little bit better than a lot of that group. And so for me, it's like either Dr. Post or him and then all the other ones that I just yeah. mentioned. Yeah. And I I'm, I go more to you. I got I to watch some of those replays. I, I have to be honest with you. I only play Southern California, so I don't yeah. – watch as much as you sure. do on horses shipping yeah. in yeah um so i have to listen to you and then go back and watch a lot of replays on those because i don't yeah. follow the east coast like that so but georgie i um i'm using three in here to get by uh the, the uh the pick six and my ticket's going to be 108 dollars. we'll get to that in a, in a second but uh my top pick by far it's not even close but I, you know, I'm not a hundred percent confident. But I mean, I almost singled him. But I'm going to use a couple anyway. Is number three, Doctor Post. Doctor Post, his last race, he ran a negative one on the sheets. In the in the Westchester, he ran a negative one. I mean, that's the fastest by far. He's got two of them. And and uh, you know, Todd Pletcher is bringing him here. Rosario is coming. Uh, this is why they're coming. And and this is a really really good colt, a, a four year old that. Uh, has you know just a uh, a slew of grade graded stakes races under his belt and always performs well. That one clunker was the Metropolitan, and like you said, I mean even the fourth place finisher was yeah. you know uh, just a superstar. So um, Rosario, I've always, you know I was his like uh, quasi Asian for a while uh, before they fi he fired us. Uh, <laughs> to go to the love man. But I mean, the guy is just, <laughs> he's just one, he was wonderful. I mean, I remember um, he went to the Dominican Republic. He was on like a five to one shot. This was like the first week that we had him and I'm watching the race. He wins the race. I go pick him up at the airport and, 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 uh, and I go, man, I can't believe you, you won that race. And he goes, that's what I do. He goes, the guy, <laughs> Gee, I mean, the guy's so, he's oh. so confident. And uh, and uh, nicest guy in the world, and you said it. Who looks better closing on a horse than yeah. Rosario? That's finisher he's by far. Good. Yeah. He's the best. He's man. He's pushing those guys and like nobody's business. I, I, I've, Sometimes 
it'll get him in a little trouble because he knows that it's like a shortstop who who worry who trusts their arm a little too much and then right, right. Like, wait, wait. he wants to show off what he can do but right. no when he's he he finishes as best as anyone yeah yeah he finishes so you got to use him and he's my top pick, and he's four to one. I mean, just uh, you know, he's the third choice. There, there you go, Georgie. That's your single where no one else singles. I like, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, I already I singled uh, elsewhere, but uh, but I'm scared of Royal Ship. The the uh, the Gold Cup was a sensational race. Yeah. Uh, you know, he beat Express Train easily uh, in that race, and you know, Express Train they're they're training training punches, so it's hard to come back. And Express Train certainly looked good in 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 his races as well. So I'm going to use three, four, five. And hope to get by, but Doctor Post, I, I could theoretically single him. Doctor Post uh, certainly looks good. Race number eleven, uh, we're going to move on here, and it is the uh, finale, the Del Mar Handicap, and uh, this was presented by Japanese Racing Association. And my wife's Japanese, so we love this race. And uh, a mile and three eighths, uh, a tricky distance. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, uh, number four. United for sure. I mean, you got to use United. Uh, I'm using as a long shot, Master of Foxhounds. I think Master of Foxhounds. Uh, you got a a, a great uh, a, a great chance at eight to one. You got Desormo, who's you know been rejuvenated. R Richie Baltus. He comes in with uh, you know a stellar stellar number. Uh, I know Brad Cox doesn't lose races, um, and and he's going to be tough. But I'm I'm going to try to beat him in this spot. And I really, you know, the one I'm going to be betting to win, who I really, really like, even though it was beaten last time out, is uh, Say the Word. Say the Word is 6-1. to one. Joe Bravo has impressed me so much here at Del Mar. You know, he's an old, grizzled, you know, jockey with a great attitude. I mean, every time you hear him interviewed, oh, yeah. just the nicest guy. Yeah. yeah. How easy to root for him. But he's, you know, he's, he's really, really well. And the motto to me, he's the Sultan of Saad. Uh, I don't know if there's, you know, a better trainer on the grass right now. He's just, he's just phenomenal. And I think that Say the Word has been working really well. Uh, uh, six to one is, is a must use. So I'm just going to use United, Master of Foxhounds, and Say the Word. And that's going to be a $108 pick six for me. Uh, Chappie? Well, I, I mean, well, you got you got the ticket already put in the. I got a lot. I got a lot of work to do. Georgie's yeah. already got the ticket. He's firing away. It's already here at Santa Anita. He put it in. Um, you know, look, the obvious ones. United. You know, do you notice United wins every other race? Yeah, win, yeah. Loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. The last seven races. You know. Um, Pratt's going to put this horse in a good spot. He's five for five in the money. I don't have to talk about him as much. I do like some prices. Um, I think Arc Lowe's a must use with five to two. That's not a price. The price I was going to use is say the word. So Georgie yeah. so, stole my thunder there. Yes. Uh, good spot. And I think that uh, this horse is sneaky, you know, back w way, way back in, in November, this horse um, just exploded here at Del Mar and uh, they were crawling early. It ran a clunker last time out. That's fine. Um, but but the one thing about D'Amato is D'Amato has been cold, was cold. D'Amato is heating up the last couple of weeks. Right, right, right. The horses are starting to run. And uh, I think, I think uh, say the word's going to run a big race. I'm going to spread here a little bit more. I, I'm undecided. I, I'm, I, United doesn't – some people are going to single that horse. I, no, yeah. Not me. Gino. Yes. He doesn't um, inspire confidence to me as a single. He, no, yeah. he, you know he in in the Whittingham he should have crushed that field and uh, he he just uh, he, he doesn't inspire me. Gino and I think he um he he's so honest he's really good but he really benefited from the slower pace last time out because he's good going long like at this trip because he's able to just kind of lope along. And Correct. If they go faster, he doesn't really have that kind of turn of foot when they're shorter. So it was impressive that he won, you know, because he's not quite as good when they go shorter. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't need him like by myself by himself at all. You, you, I think we hit a lot of the horse. Say the word is just he's much better going long too. You look at his races going longer. That race in the kind of the, the opposite, you know, for some of the horses who ran well in the Eddie Reed, if they go slow going shorter, he's got no shot. No shot. 
He needs them to go really fast in order for it to set up, or he has to go longer where they're not just going to go quite as fast and he can kind of stay in the race more. So he's a must use to me here. Um, you probably will have United. You know, if I single Dr. Post, I don't want to have this race where I don't have United in the last race of a pick six where I'm alive for a lot of money. Um, the, you know, the other one would be, I mean, Arclo is probably on my ticket, but my, my top selection is here is one that George kind of mentioned in passing, and that's Master of Foxhounds. So when you go through his races at um, in Southern in Southern California and then just in general in the U.S., he comes in his first start in November of 2020. He doesn't run all that well, but he has some trouble and has his first start in the country. And then his second start, he wins. And his third start, he wins the San Marcos. He comes back. He's not far behind United and say the word in the San Luis Rey. He goes over in the Turf Classic in that race uh, at Churchill on May the 5th. He's behind domestic spending, smooth like straight, who were both next out grade one winners. Then he runs in the Manhattan. He's behind Trebuvin, who's a next out grade one winner. Gufo wins a stakes race out of that uh, in his next start. Rock Emperor won an allowance race next and then finished second in the grade two bowling green. I, you know, I, I think his form overall is a little bit better than it might look when you just see it on paper and you kind of dig into it. He's proven at Del Mar. Closing the pick six, I absolutely need Master of Foxhounds on my ticket. And you're gonna you're gonna get more than eight to one, I think. I think yeah. so too. Yeah, especially yeah. in the pick six sequence, he's gonna play like a oh, yeah. uh, ten to one you, shot. You want at least one horse like that in your to close, right? Right, you know, right. Like, there's nothing worse than like you play the big pick six. You look at it, yeah. you're expecting all this big money, and it's like, oh wait, it's not that much. Like at least you know you'll get a good look at some some prices with him. Yep. All right. Uh, wow, man. Great uh, great day tomorrow. Don't miss it. Get involved via uh, firstbet uh, or uh, or expressbet.com. We got great promotions. Uh, you guys were fantastic as usual. Chappie, Gino, always a pleasure to have you on. We're not going to have him next week, are we, Chappie? No, right? No, he's out. I'm okay, oh, sorry. Yeah. Love, love chatting he's with you boys. Anytime. I know. I'm, I'm exhausting. I'm annoying. One week, then you need like three weeks to recover. Yeah, That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Th thank you, guys. That's the show. We'll see you next week.